Hi. How you guys doing? How you feeling today? Yes. Yes. Good. My name is Marie. I am so excited to be here with you today. So I have a question to start us off. If I told you that there was one single phrase that could not only help you reach your dreams, but could also help you transform or transcend any obstacle you face, who would be interested in that? Anyone? Yes, okay, a few people, that's all I need, this is good. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about that phrase and we're gonna talk about how it works, and I promise you, it's so simple and you will be able to use it now, where you are in terms of high school, but also throughout the rest of your life. So. Let's talk about where this little phrase came from. And to do that, we gotta go back to my childhood and even before that. So I wanna tell you about my mom. She is this uh, incredible firecracker of a woman. She is about 5'3". She looks like June Cleaver. She has the tenacity of a bulldog and she curses like a truck driver. She grew up in the projects of Newark, New Jersey to two alcoholic parents and she learned by necessity how to stretch a dollar bill around the block like five times. And my mom made a promise to herself. She said somehow, some way, she was gonna find a way to a better life. One of my fondest memories growing up as a kid in New Jersey was sitting around the kitchen table with my mom cutting out coupons because she loved to teach us all the different ways that we could save money as a family. That was really important to us. And she also taught me about the fact that big companies and brands would send you cool free things like recipe books and cooking utensils if you saved up what were known as proofs of purchase. Do you guys know what those things are? Yes. So one of my mom's most prized possessions in the world was this tiny little AM FM radio that she got from Tropicana orange juice for free. It was the shape, size, and color of an orange. It had this red and white straw sticking out of the side. That was the antenna. And my mom's one of those moms who's always busy. She's always doing something. She's always working on something. And I knew as a little girl, I could find her somewhere around the yard or somewhere around the house by listening for music blaring out of that tiny little Tropicana orange. So one day, I'm coming home from school, and I hear music playing off in the distance, and I get closer to my house, and I look up, and I see my mom perched precariously on the roof of our two-story house with her little orange next to her butt. And I'm like, Mom, what are you doing up there? Are you okay? And she yells down, Re, I'm fine. Don't worry about it. The roof had a leak. I called the roofer. He said it would be at least 500 bucks. I said, screw that. I'm doing it myself. That's my mom. Another day, I come home from school, and I hear this little music blaring from the back of the house. So I walk to the back, and it turns out my mom's in the bathroom. I push open the door, there's pipes sticking out of the wall, there's power tools on the floor, there's dust particles in the air, it looked like an explosion went off. And I was like, Mom, are you okay? What's going on, what's wrong? She's like, Ree, I'm fine. She's like, the bathroom tiles had some cracks in it, I didn't want it to get moldy, so I'm retiling the entire bathroom. Now you guys gotta get, this is the 1980s. This is a pre-internet, pre-YouTube, pre-Google world. My mom is only high school educated, but I never knew what she'd be doing, but I knew I'd find her by finding the sound of that little radio. So, one day I come home from school, and it's late. You know in the fall when it's dark out, and you have that eerie feeling outside? I walk up to my house, and it's completely dark, and it's silent, which for an Italian-American home, that's not a good sign. I walk in and I had a pit in my stomach, nervous about what I might find. Where's my mom? Where's the sound of that little radio? All of a sudden I heard some clicks and clacks and I followed that sound and I discovered my mom in the kitchen, hunched over the kitchen table, which looked like an operating room. She had a screwdriver, electrical tape, and then spread out in front of her was like a dozen pieces of a completely dismantled little Tropicana orange radio. And I was like, Mom, are you okay? That's your favorite thing, is everything all right? She said, oh, Ree, it's fine. The tuner dial was a little off and the antenna was busted, so I'm fixing it. And I stood there for a minute, watching my mom work her magic like she always did, and I finally thought to, question, to ask the question that I always should have asked, which was this. Hey, Mom, how do you know how to do so many different things that you've never done before, but nobody's shown you how to do it? And she put down her screwdriver, she cocked her head to the side, and she looked at me and she said, Ray, what are you talking about? It's no big deal. Nothing in life 
is that complicated. If you roll up your sleeves, you get in there and you do it. Everything is figure outable. And I was like, whoa, that phrase was cool. And it washed over me and it planted a seed in my soul that I swear to you has been the most powerful driving force in my life ever since. So when I was in high school, there were some years that I spent because I got kicked out of my house and I was estranged from my family and it helped me get through that time. I also found myself in the midst of a, a toxic and abusive relationship and that phrase helped me extricate myself from that. When I got into college, and I'm the first family in my family to go to college, it helped me secure these rare work-study positions that I really needed in order to complete school. After I got out of school, that phrase helped me get every job I've ever had, from bartending, from waiting tables, from being on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange, finance and Wall Street, working in publishing, then starting to teach hip hop and dance, and eventually becoming one of the world's first Nike elite dance athletes and master trainers to having the audacity to start a business at 23, despite the fact that I had no clue what the hell I was doing. I was completely insecure. I was piles and piles in debt. But I took that idea and I grew it into a global brand that I have today. It's what inspired me to get myself out of debt eventually and to take care of my relationships and my health. When I was probably about 28, it inspired me to start making videos on my webcam which later evolved into an award-winning online show that has tens of millions of viewers in 195 countries. And I'm not saying any of this to brag, I'm saying this because I am certain in my bones that everything is figure outable. Now, you guys might not believe that that's true right now. How many people in here, a little skeptical, not really so sure that everything is figure outable? Be honest, anybody? I see at least one, good, good, perfect, perfect, perfect. I love this, so let's talk about this, this is good. So when I was first starting to work on this book, I was at to brunch with some friends, and one of my friends had a 10-year-old son that came to brunch with us, and they said, Marie, what are you working on? I said, oh, I'm working on a new book. What's the title? Everything is figure outable. And the 10-year-old was like, no, it's not. Nope, absolutely not. And I was like, oh, this is awesome. Tell me, young man, tell me what you believe is not figure outable. And he said, well, we human beings, we can't grow working human wings out of our back so we could just fly away. And I said, well, that's true, but you do know about something called CRISPR, right? That might be coming down the road. And if anyone don't, doesn't know what CRISPR is, definitely Google it because it's amazing. I said, but the fact is, even though we don't have wings, we human beings can indeed fly, right? And he said, yes, you're right. Okay, well, what about this one? We can't bring my dog back from the dead, the one that died like two years ago that I miss so much. And in my head, I'm thinking, well, that's some pet cemetery-ish right there. But the truth is, scientists are working on cryogenics, and people have been cloning their dogs for a few years now. And he was like, you know what, you're right. So conversations like that really inspired me to take a look at this from a scientific perspective, okay? Just because something hasn't been figured out up till now is not scientific proof that it isn't figure outable, just that it hasn't been figured out yet. What's an example? 100 years ago, we would have thought that human beings walking on the moon sounded crazy. Actually, you would have thought someone would be a lunatic if they said that idea. That's actually where the word comes from, lunatic. Yet, in 1969, we figured out how to do that. So, I wanted to create a set of rules around this idea, and this is really important. This is what will allow you to use the concept and the philosophy for its intended purpose, which is to help you activate the power you already have inside to create positive change in your life and in the lives around you. So, you guys ready for the three rules? Yes? Okay, good. Rule number one, all problems and all dreams are figure outable. Cool? Rule number two, if a problem isn't figure outable, it's not a problem, it's a fact of life. Death, gravity, certain laws of nature. Tracking with me? Good. Rule number three, and this is the big one, you may not care enough to solve a particular problem or reach a particular dream, and guess what? That's okay. 
go find something you do care deeply about and return back to rule number one. You know, when I was writing the book, I love inspiring quotes because they make me think on a deeper level. And I found this quote by a British quantum theorist who wrote a book called The Beginning of Infinity. It's a mind bender. I recommend it on audio because reading it is like NyQuil. It puts you to sleep. But he has this great quote and it goes like this. Everything that is not forbidden by the laws of nature is achievable given the right knowledge. So you don't have to take my word for this or a quantum theorist's word. What I would ask of you is to simply try it before you deny it. Try it before you deny it. I've been talking about this idea for years, and I've never met one human being who hasn't used this phrase to find more power, more creativity, and more ingenuity in themselves. When the book was about to come out, I had a friend of mine call me who I'd known for like 15 years, and he was congratulating me on the book because it's a big deal, and he said, but I got to tell you, Marie, I don't buy it. I don't buy it. Are you telling me that really painful stuff like trauma or like addiction or like a life-altering or a life-ending diagnosis, how can you be saying that that is figure-outable? And I told him, I can, and I have a story to prove it. And here's what I shared. So the first time that I was talking about this idea outside of my own students and in my own business was actually on Oprah Winfrey's Super Soul Sessions. So this is a big event that she has, and it's kind of like TED Talks. And I went there, and I gave a talk about everything is figureoutable. And they took that talk, and they sent it out into the world through her podcast. So I started getting these emails and these letters from people who I had never met before who just heard that talk, and this phrase changed their life. One of these letters was from a woman named Jen. Here's what Jen said to me. She said, Marie, thank you so much for that talk. It was really inspiring. My mom has been trying to teach me this same idea my whole life. And in fact, I sat down with her and we both watched her talk together. But then something happened. Everything changed. My beautiful mom, who's like my best friend, was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. And suddenly, nothing seemed figureoutable. But Jen said, you know what? I took a step back and I looked more deeply at it, and this is what I discovered. I could figure out how to get nursing care for my mom who lives in a rural area. I could figure out how to find foods that my mom could actually tolerate. And then this was the big one for Jen. I could figure out how to get medical equipment so my beautiful mom could spend her last days, and in fact, her last five weeks on this planet, exactly where she wanted to be, which was in her own home. So Jen said, thank you so much for sharing this simple idea that made a huge difference to a family on the other side of the world. Jen was from New Zealand. So in the book, which you're going to get today, there are dozens and dozens of more stories of people that are facing some of the most challenging circumstances of their life, heart-wrenching circumstances, who have used this little phrase to support them in finding courage and in finding creativity, especially when they need it most. So... For you here today, what we want to do is just share this phrase, everything is figureoutable. That's all you got to do is keep using it. And I've done the research on this. From a neuroscience perspective, if you keep using this phrase over and over, it will change your brain in a really positive way. Here's how. It will train you to think more creatively. It will train you to think more optimistically, especially in the face of setbacks, which every single human on this earth faces. Raise your hands. Anyone ever have challenges in school? Yes, right? Anyone ever have challenges at home? Yes, right? I promise you, you have such a well of creativity and, sorry for cursing, power in you right now, and this little phrase awakens it. I'm sorry, that's Jersey Marie coming out. She gets passionate sometimes. This phrase will help you anytime you find yourself backed into a corner, anytime you find yourself down on the luck going, I don't know if I can do this. I don't know if I can find a way through. I don't know if I can find that strength or that energy or what I need to lift myself up. And I am telling you right now, yes, you can. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, well, Marie, this might be nice for you, but I don't look like what you look like. We don't come from different places. We're not cut from the same cloth. Here's what I would say to this. I don't know the details of your history or your hardship, but here's what I do know about you. I know that your power is immense. I know that your potential is limitless. 
I know that you're worthy, that you're capable, and that you can achieve the dreams in your heart. And I know we share a little bit of the same DNA because we're both students and seekers. So I'm excited for you guys to get your hands on this book today. I'm excited for us to have these conversations. I'm excited for your questions because you guys are the future. And I'm sure you know this. Both individually and collectively, we are facing some big challenges that humanity has never faced before from gender inequality to racism to pollution to a million other things that are forcing us to take a real good look at how we're living our lives and how we're gonna lead into the future, you guys have the solution. You guys are who's gonna make the big changes. And what's gonna allow that to happen is if you have that unshakable belief in yourself that not only are you worthy, but you will figure it out.